there are people that will follow Jesus, and there are people that will serve Jesus, and there are people that will love Jesus, and people that will worship Him. There are people that love God, people that serve God, and walk with God. A lot of people talk to God, and they discuss with Him their relationship, or their lack thereof. Sometimes they treat Him as a distant object, or a person to be looked at as seen from afar and not intimate and have that intimacy that could sit down and have a conversation with God himself. Everyone has a God. Everyone has known God at some point in time. Everyone has a reality of experiencing God in some way because the Bible says so. It literally states that every person has known God and that when they did know God, they changed it from the image of the incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man. And everyone has done that in some way. We call that, in a positive way, an anthropomorphism, where we take some aspect of God who is bigger than we are and greater than we are and so much more beyond our understanding that we try to apply some human characteristic to him so that we would understand him better, so that we could relate to him. And in a lot of ways, that's good. But in some ways, we need to get back to that unknowable God, that though he has revealed himself in his son, Jesus, and though Jesus is the express image of God, that if we have seen him, we've seen the Father, there's so much more beyond our comprehension than there is of our comprehension. In other words, God is always going to go beyond anything we really understand. Just remember that, because that's where most people make their mistake about knowing God as opposed to following God. Because we can only know in part, and we can only see in part, and we can only understand in part, but that little part that we have we can take it and run with it as far as we can go because God will be there and he will show us each every step of the way as we go on in our way walking with him in faith more of himself because he will constantly reveal to us himself as we're willing to get out of ourselves and our own understanding to move into his way and his understanding as a disciple as a person who wants to grow in God rather than be just a follower, we choose to use utmost for his highest because we know that it's going to beat us to death. It's going to drive the nails. Really, really, your hands are one of the two biggest objects that get you in trouble. Your mouth is another one, but your mouth can also be a blessing. But your hands, what you put your hand to, gets you in lots of trouble. So literally, this, this book, my utmost first highest, these videos, this devotional, will take your hand and nail that sucker to a cross. And it will take the other one and nail it there too. Because until we die to self, until we really get to the gist of knowing God in a more intimate and personal way, we are the most dangerous active creatures in the universe because we could be using these hands to bless people and to help them instead of causing them for war and to kill and to maim and to destroy. We could be healers and helpers and not those activists for destruction that we have become. So in choosing to be a follower of Jesus in a way that goes beyond those who just simply follow him, that becomes one of his disciples, that learns to become his friend, that is intimate with him and wants to lay down their life, then I suggest you read these as we read them and as we go through them. Will you go out without knowing? He went out not knowing where he was going, Hebrews 11.8. Have you ever gone out in this way? If so, there is no logical answer possible when anyone asks you what you are doing. One of the most difficult questions to answer in Christian work is, what do you expect to do? You don't know what you're going to do. The only thing you know is that God knows what he is doing. Continually examine your attitude towards God to see if you're willing to go out in every area of your life, trusting in God entirely. 
do you go out of your own understanding and your own way and your own comfort zone and your own personal religion in order to let God reveal something that he might want to take out of your life so that you would become less conformed into the image of man but more conformed into the image of the son of man the son of God that he wants to make you into being or are you content to just sit where you're at to be like everyone else to dress the same to look the same to worship the same or can you step out of your comfort zone can you be sent to some place you think you hate can you step out of your reality check of all this beautiful worship that you have and go to some place that doesn't worship in the same way can you literally come out of yourself to give of the grace you've been given and the mercy to reach out to someone who you despise and hate are you so stuck in a rut that you can't get and accept that other Christian that other person that other culture that other belief even the president himself much less the government can you step out and be stretched into the salvation that you're not participating in the political system you're not participating in the social welfare evangelism that's going on but rather you're participating in the reality of letting God take you anywhere anytime any place he chooses that's what a disciple is because if you're not go read a devotional that isn't my utmost because we are talking about the utmost here we're talking about giving up everything you got to gain God now I don't want to offend you but really go somewhere else and do something else with your time because you can read and study and develop and become a really dynamic religious Christian you know and a very personal intimate with God relationship without having to become a disciple you don't have to go the utmost you can go most you don't have to be the uttermost for the utmost with his highest and giving everything that you got but if you do you need to know what you're doing and that is willingness on your part how willing are you to leave it in God's hands because utmost isn't going to let you do anything else except give up yourself in order to gain himself it's not easy it's definitely not easy it's something that you will be working on every year of your life every day of your life if you're willing to give your utmost this is not for the casual believer or the casual Christian this is for the disciple who wants to go beyond anything they've ever experienced before continually examine your attitude toward God to see if you're willing to go out in every area of your life trusting in God entirely in finances in job in life in love in emotions in feelings in the soul in the spirit in the flesh in everything it is this attitude that keeps you in constant wonder because you don't know what God is going to do next each morning as you wake there is a new opportunity to go out building your confidence in God do not worry about your life nor about the body Luke 12 22 reminds us and Jesus told us to not think of those things for what can you do in order to increase them nothing in other words don't worry about the things that concerned you before you did go out have you been asking God what he is going to do he will never tell you God does not tell you what he is going to do he reveals to you who he is and that is what you are attaining to the knowledge of God himself do you believe in a miracle working God and will you go out in complete surrender to him until you are not surprised one iota by anything he does <laughs> Praise the Lord. I feel like, wow, after 35 years, I've arrived on that one sentence. I, there is nothing that surprises me about God anymore. It's like, yep, that's my God. That's my daddy. You know, he took care of it. <laughs> no problem. People say to me, 
man, you know, go out and get a gun, you know, so you can protect yourself against gangs. Why? I mean, if God can't protect me, who can? Oh, well, you know, you better lock your car, you know, and make sure that everything's all put away and hidden, you know, because after all, we don't want to tempt somebody. It's like, well, gee, I think that God could take care of that temptation a lot better than I could, you know, and I think he could tell me if somebody's going to do something about it. You know, I mean, if I can't turn everything over to God, why am I called a Christian? Why do I pretend that God is alive? If God can't see everything, then I have no right to call myself a Christian. If God can't do everything, then I have no responsibility to being called his disciple. If God can't intervene in the affairs of man, then I have no reason to read the Bible whatsoever and no absolute want or desire to understand what Jesus did because it's a lie if God can't intervene. But you see, because of what I see in Jesus and what I see in the world and what I've experienced, oh yeah, God intervenes. Believe God is always the God you know Him to be when you are nearest to Him. Then think how unnecessary and disrespectful worry is. Let the attitude of your life be a continual willingness to go out in dependence upon God, and your life will have a sacred and inexpressible charm about it that is very satisfying to Jesus. You must learn to go out through your convictions, through your creeds or experiences until you come to the point in your faith where there is nothing between yourself and God Almighty. <laughs> So what are you going to do? What will you do? Will you step back now and say, well, you know, uh, that, that going out thing is kind of nice when you don't got a job, you know, and you don't have income, you know, and then it's easy. But hey, I, I, you know, I've invested 20 years of my life, you know, in this job, you know, and I've got retirement, man, you know, I mean, I'm looking forward to, you know, kind of being in this job rather than being with God. But, you know, maybe God wants me to stay here. Has he told you? Well, no. Then what do you do? Are you going out of yourself? Or are you staying where it's comfortable? In other words, anyone can get a job, anyone can stay at a job, and anyone can participate at a job, and anyone can retire. But how many can go out and trust the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and all their being? How many can at a moment's notice be told, get up and go? And they go. <laughs> Lord, thank you. Because for me, my life has always been that way. Yes, I'm a Jesus gypsy, all right. Because whenever God said go, I went. And that meant, quite often, my resume has hundreds of jobs in it. All jobs that I had to go find one and got one and did it and succeeded in it. And would love to have stayed in it. <laughs> but God at the time said, go. So I went. Because the income wasn't, or the job wasn't the ministry. The ministry was what I was there to do. The job was just a means for me to get financial support to do whatever it was that God sent me to do in the first place. And sometimes in my later life, the ministry was in those jobs. So how willing are you to be a disciple? Choose now, because it would be better if you just went back to being a follower. It's easy. It's simple. I'm telling you straight up. It's only January 2nd, you know, and you could go back to not reading this. It would be so much simpler. But man, I tell you. It is so exciting. It is so challenging. It is so revealing to see what God can do when you let Him be in charge.